everyone, welcome back to Veggie Magnifique, your go-to for holistic wellness and healthy vegan lifestyle. Welcome to the first trimester vlog. stuff. This is a new adventure, a new total adventure. Okay, so today I am seven weeks and four days. I'm using this app called Pregnancy Plus and it's super interesting. Totally filled with crap articles that are like, eat eggs and fish. And I'm like, yeah, thanks. You know, I'll pass on the mercury in my baby. But in any case, it has some cool data and it has like a picture of what your baby looks like right now and it's like this it's very cool that part is cool the the articles that it shares are absolutely filled with n'importe quoi or how would you say that in english nicely bs let's just say that anyway so yeah <laughs> first trimester we are totally in denial that's just i'm just gonna be brutally honest i feel fine i feel normal i i'm tired i'm super tired that's for sure i'm like at, by eight o'clock i'm just like done <laughs> which is interesting. It's been tricky to try to get work done since I have like 60 jobs. It's like when I get home from one, I'm supposed to be working on Veggie Magnifique and whatnot. And sometimes I'm just like conked out on the couch. But fortunately, so far, I haven't had any morning sickness. So I think that's actually been irking me a little bit. I'm like, are you sure there's something in there? You know, like, cause I, I are you sure? But there's gotta be, you know, all signs point to there's gotta be something in there. I am a bit more peckish than usual. Just, you know, slightly. Usually I'm peckish. Like, I love food, I love eating, I love snacks, things like that. But I'm just a little bit more, like, hard to fill up, if that makes sense. So in terms of working out, I am totally exercising because not only is exercise a wonderful, healthful habit. I made a video all about that, I'll link it. Uh, but also, it's very, very helpful and healthful to do during your pregnancy, per all of my research. Obviously, you don't wanna overdo it or pick up a new exercise regime that you weren't doing before. That's, you know, obvious. But since I have been exercising so regularly before getting pregnant, now that I am, of course, I continue exercising. I just don't do weird things that would not feel good on my belly. And also, I really am striving to get into like birth fit shape. So this idea that, you know, my body is an instrument and in order to go through this marathon that is birth, you have to prepare. You know, you have to prepare mentally, you have to prepare physically, you have to prepare like spiritually, you have to prepare, right? So I'm totally in preparation mode and thinking about different exercises that seem to like, you know, open up the pelvis and yeah, the whole thing. So again, at seven weeks, I don't think most people are showing, like I'm not, Really, I don't know if you can see anything. I'm not gonna get naked here, but like, I think there's a little bit of bloating here, you know what I mean? And I have to pee all the time. I'm really close to the mic here, sorry. But I don't feel, you know, I feel the same in my clothes. I just feel kind of a little bloated, I guess, which is interesting. Another reason why we're like, you know, like, you in there? I don't know. But as the vlogs go on, I'm sure I will get a little something, at least, in theory, before the end of this vlog is over of the first trimester, so I'll keep you posted on the bump, or in this case, the non-existent bump. And what I'm really excited about is that the team is in place for the birth. So something that was really important to me for like peace of mind was that I get together my birthing team early, right? So I have a doula, I met her last week. So today we're going to meet my doula. I've spoken with her on the phone, but we're gonna meet her in person. So I'm pretty excited because it just kind of makes it feel more real. So let's go. And I also have a midwife whom I met a couple weeks ago. So we've been in constant communication. True to form, 
as you can imagine, I'm going to strive to have a home birth. That is the plan. I was a home birth. My brother was a home birth. My nephew, Baby Magnifique, was a home birth. That's like, that's how we do it in my tribe. And so I'm super excited for this challenge that awaits me. Like my mom, who is just like maternal goddess, is so calm. So I'm striving to kind of like embody my mom and her calm energy, just like, yeah, I just had a home birth and it was so lovely and your great grandmother was there and plop, you know. We have different personalities, she and I. <laughs> I think she has a higher threshold for pain. However, however, I've got time. I've got like eight months. And so I have time to prepare for this marathon, as I said. So yeah, so we're preparing by talking about the birth plan, talking about how we'd like everything to go. Again, let me just say, because it bears saying, obviously when you are pregnant, you ought to create a birth plan but life is full of interesting twists and turns and you do what you can to follow the plan, but sometimes things are unplanned and I realize that. So I'm going to do everything in my power to manifest a gentle home birth. But of course, if the SHIT hits the fan or something like that, you know, and you have to rally and go someplace else, God forbid, you rally, you know, you rally. And what's really important is that you think about where you're gonna feel the safest, right? Where you're gonna feel the most comfortable, the most at ease, to be able to, to do this massive thing. And so some people feel more comfortable in a hospital. That's just where they feel comfortable. They're like, woohoo, modern medicine, that's where I feel comfortable. And you do you, you have to do you. Of course, for me, that that is, that is not where I would feel comfortable. And I would feel so much more comfortable at home, you know, in my own space with, you know, music and candles and just like, you know, my cat, you know? I, mean, I can't really bring your cat to the hospital either. That's a big factor. No, I'm kidding, but just what I mean is that it's really important to think about where you're gonna be the most comfortable. So I'm in the process of preparing for that. I'm reading a ton of books. So let's talk about preparation, actually. So again, I'm super early, I'm super early, I'm seven weeks. Which, by the way, if you've never been pregnant or if you're not privy to how it all works, and I wasn't, so it's seven weeks, that's what they say, seven weeks, but technically it's five weeks. They count it from your last actual period, right? The first day of it. So there were two weeks there where baby wasn't conceived and that makes the seven weeks, but that's how they calculate it. I think it's somewhat of an archaic method because they can only guesstimate where the ovulation took place. I think that's like the rationale behind it. Of course, if you're tracking, if you're charting, if you have like an app, like I know exactly when I conceived, so I, I can kind of do that math. However, that is how we talk about like the weeks. So I'm seven weeks, but technically gestationally, I'm five weeks. So how am I preparing? Well, in addition to exercise, in addition to reading books, I'm also doing a lot of meditation. I'm also doing a lot of hypnobirthing stuff because you gotta get your mind in the game But I'm just in the beginning phases of that. There's so many things I want to read It's just overwhelming actually and in addition to that obviously I'm taking prenatal vitamins. Let's talk about that So the prenatals that I'm taking are from Dr. Furman. I'm a big fan of his vitamins These are gentle prenatal multivitamin and minerals. They're excellent. Also in terms of Joel Furman I'm taking an EPA DHA. So EPA DHA is so that your baby has a nice big brain. Now you can get these kinds of omegas in flaxseed. And so I put a bunch of flaxseed in our oats every morning. So I'm kind of like covering myself. So this is kind of just a security, but the research seems to indicate that it would be a good idea to take this instead of say, you know, mercury ridden salmon omega-3s because there's a slew of issues with eating fish. Obviously I'm a vegan and so I've done this research. I will link some some information down below about fish in case you are pregnant so that you can inform yourself and do your own research, do your own research. So I'm taking EPA DHA and eating lots of flaxseed, you know, chia seeds, the usual. And then in terms of my daily vitamins, I love Dr. Group. I always get this on my hands. It just gets everywhere, but I love it. So vitamin C, obviously just like a daily thing. B12, this is the vegan safe B12, and then vitamin D. Now these are just vitamins that I take every single day. These are my daily supplements. B12 is of course very important. We uh, lack B12 as a society, not just vegans. We made a video about that, which I'll link, it's super old, but it's cute. So of course vitamin D is really important unless you live somewhere where it's sunny 
all the time and you're getting enough sun, right? So voila. On Veggie Magnifique, we've talked about supplements before. So I will link that video up above. But in any case, these are the supplements that I take every day. And so I'm continuing to do so in addition to adding in more regular EPA DHA and Dr. Furman's gentle prenatal vitamins. Of course, I'm also drinking tons of green smoothies. Why am I doing this? Well, because in terms of nutrition, it's hard to eat enough greens. It really is. Like, I love greens, but I, I can't eat them for every meal necessarily. And, you know, I can only eat like so much salad. So I've been having a green smoothie every day just to up my folate, because folate, folic acid, they always tell you you need to have folic acid. Well, technically you need folate, right? That's the, the natural version of folic acid. So I'm using barley grass powder and chlorella. Smoothie time. They say that pregnant women should watch out for Moringa, so I'm not using Moringa right now, although when I'm not pregnant, I do like Moringa. So a few of the things that I wanna talk about that I have now early in my pregnancy that I have gotten, and those things are, Ticino, which, okay, so let's talk about caffeine here. It's somewhat nebulous. You do research and it seems that you shouldn't have too much caffeine. They say about 200 milligrams per day and then there's conflicting you know, information about how much is in a cup of matcha. So I don't drink coffee, I drink matcha. And I love matcha and I have two a day usually. But since I've been pregnant, I have curbed my enthusiasm and I'm only having one per day, which I think leaves me quite below the 200 milligrams of caffeine. But I'm just being a little bit wary because the thing is green tea can inhibit inhibit iron absorption. And so I don't take my vitamins with my matcha in the morning. I take them later with breakfast because then that way I'm not worried about iron absorption being inhibited. And that's another thing to definitely look into. So if you're a coffee drinker, and even if you're not, I highly recommend this tea chino, which is it's called French Roast and I got it on Amazon and it's organic and it's caffeine free. So what is tea chino? Essentially, it's us Americans trying to be cool like the French with chicory, right? So it's chicory and what else do they put in here? I think there's carob. So organic carob, organic barley, organic chicory, organic Ramon seeds, organic natural coffee flavor. So voila, I have been having this every day in the afternoon when I would be having my afternoon matcha. Is it the same? Absolutely not. It's totally not the same. That's the only thing I lament about being pregnant is not being able to have my second matcha of the day, which I realize is a total luxury. It's just my favorite thing. It's just what sparks joy. Like nothing else really sparks joy like that. Like I, I drink water, I drink Matcha. That's, yeah. So anyway, this French roast is pretty impressive and it is, it does the trick, it does the trick. So if you're a coffee drinker, I highly recommend you look into this and or look into just pure chicory, which I also found on Amazon in the States. Because in France, you can get it everywhere. In France, you can get just plain chicory. You can get like the Chicoré, that brand. You can get Yano. You can get, there's another one. It's totally like a French standby. So this has been great to kind of sort of assuage my matcha frustration. But I think I'm doing the right thing. I really do. I think I'm doing the right thing by having less matcha because the truth is, is that it, it does pack a punch. It does, right? And I think one a day is passable. Like that's cool. You know, one a day is fine. There's antioxidants in matcha. I'm a big believer in matcha. There's so many wonderful aspects, right? There's, it's, it's a green powder. You're consuming the green powder. It's got chlorophyll. It, it's Zenergy at its finest. It's fantastic. You guys know my ardent love for matcha, but I also don't want to have, I don't want to overdo it. Let's be real here. So I will link this Ticino. It comes in a lot of different flavors. I just ordered another flavor to experiment. This one, this one's like coffee E, which again, I don't drink coffee. I don't really like coffee, but I can handle it. You know, I can handle it and it's caffeine free. That's the whole point. And next up, this fetching tapestry is belly armor. So I'm showing you the back. So this is an EMF protecting blanket. We discovered this when Chloe was pregnant years ago now and what you do is you just kind of wear it over your abdomen. You can't really see that but not that you necessarily need illustration of that but that's what you do and now you can say that it's crazy to wear a blanket over your womb and that how in the heck can it protect from EMFs and I don't really understand exactly the science of how this protects from EMFs because that's not really my forte however I have done some research and I'm convinced that to be on the safe side it's a good idea because there are EMFs everywhere you're on your phone it's super close like especially like if you hold it down here it's super close to your womb you're on your laptop right it's like right there and EMFs electromagnetic frequencies 
they're real. It's not just like the Tooth Fairy. It's a thing, it's a thing, and our electronic devices emit it. So I want to do whatever I can to protect our baby from EMFs. Now I really kind of wish that it were a little bit bigger, because then I could just kind of tie it like an apron. I mean, sometimes I do this, kind of tie it like a, yeah, diagonally, you know? I'll do that. Anyway, I'll link this blank below if you're pregnant or if you plan to be and you want to put it on your list of things to look into, I will link it. It just, it just brings peace of mind, doesn't it? Because the truth is, is that there are just so many different toxins that we need to be aware of. And if we can do anything to prevent toxins or electromagnetic frequencies, why not, right? Why not? And also when baby arrives, they have these cute little beanie hats that you can put on baby's head to protect baby from EMFs, right? So that's another really cool thing. So that's seven weeks, seven weeks. I'll see you guys in eight weeks. Welcome to eight weeks and four days. So it's a week later and since I last vlogged and it's uh, <laughs> the fatigue is real. The fatigue is so real. I can't get like half done of what I could before just because I'm so tired. It's kind of debilitating. Like after filming today, I literally am going to have to take a big nap and then when I wake up, I will be tired. But any other women who've been pregnant out there, I'm sure that you understand, I hope. Another thing that's changed, you guys like the sunlight coming in? That's just what's happening. We like sun, it's okay. <laughs> Another thing that's a little bit more like, let's say exacerbated, is that I'm more violently hungry. So it's like before I was kind of peckish and I'd be like, mm, j'ai un petit cru. Like I, I would love to just snack a little bit, right? Now it's like, I need food now. Which I think is my response to feeling a little bit queez-tastic. I think that's what it is. You know, I think some people, when they feel a little bit of queez, are like, oh, I can't eat anything. Whereas for me, I think I'm just like, that's my response to a little bit of queez. It's like, let's just have a little snack. It does, it does placate me. It does make me feel better. So currently, I feel like I'm eating even more than usual, which I guess is a good thing. Although they say that, you know, you're not like eating for two. You need like an extra 200 calories per day at this point. I'm not really worried about it. You know, like I'm not fixating about how many calories I'm getting or not getting just because I know that I eat a healthy diet and I'm just kind of listening to my body. And if I feel like I need to eat, I'm just eating. So voila. Another thing that has changed humorously is I was like all about Ticino last week. I was like, guys, check out this Ticino. It's so cool, you know, it's like caffeine free and it kind of sort of fills the void of the afternoon matcha. Can't do it. For several days, I'm just like, no. So anyway, what I have started doing as of yesterday is doing half a matcha in the morning and half a matcha in the afternoon, which for me it really makes a big difference in my quality of life. Like the ceremony and the experience of having a matcha is so enjoyable to me that, you know, having just one in the morning and not having my afternoon was just like driving me crazy. It was like I was walking around like a lost soul without my little matcha. And also because the fatigue is so real, you're just like exhausted and you can't have a proper cup of tea. Like it's frustrating. <laughs> So at the moment, since I can't stand Ticino, I'm doing a half, like I usually put like a big heaping teaspoon in my morning matcha, uh, no more. So what I'm doing is like a little heaping half teaspoon in the morning and one in the afternoon. So I'll let you know how that continues to go for me. So far, a million times better to do it that way. Uh, I guess it's just having that experience twice a day and also it just, I think even just having a little bit of matcha in the afternoon, I think chemically it just kind of like you know, perks me up and gives me a little energy. Yeah, I'm not used to this fatigue. I realize I'm very lucky because so many people have intense morning sickness and I don't, which I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for, I'm so grateful for. So far, knock on wood, I don't have any sort of like, you know, crazy 
crazy morning sickness. Just fatigue and violent hunger, I guess. Otherwise, in terms of how I'm feeling, I'm starting to believe it a little bit more. I think both Arnold and I are starting to believe that I'm actually pregnant a little bit more. You know, like the image on the app looks a little bit more convincing, you know? And let me just show you. Like it's, you know, it looks kind of like a little human lizard instead of just a lizard, which is exciting. And uh, in terms of showing, I'm wearing my lounge pants. Um, let's see. Like, there's my underwear. Hold on a sec. Okay, so in terms of showing, apparently my midwife said this, that the baby is still like down here in the pelvis, so you can't see too much. So what it kind of feels like is that like I have impacted fecal matter, which I don't. <laughs> I'm regular, I promise. So it's actually a baby. It's actually not impacted fecal matter. Anyway, so no bump per se, just a bloat still, and that's okay. The biggest news is that I told my almost 99 and almost 95 year old grandmas that I'm expecting. And that was just like the joy of life, like having them be so elated <laughs> that, you know, our side of the family is finally producing great grandchildren. They were just like over the moon, so excited. So that made my day. Anyway, so I'm continuing to exercise every morning. I feel so much better when I exercise. Nothing crazy intense, but uh, you know, Pilates. And there's a lot of videos on YouTube that you can find for like, you know, pregnancy, even though I'm still early, so I could probably do normal stuff, and I do. So that's been helping with the fatigue and just feeling more vital. I've been striving to do more journaling, which has been great. That's week eight. Don't leave it in the bloopers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my swimming suit so that we can get some footage of the baby bump. <laughs> We're at nine weeks today, nine weeks and two days. And I have a bump. It is very small, but it is a bump. It's very, I don't even think you can see. Can you see a little bit? Like right there? There's a bump. Like it's there. I'm not just bloated. So we have evidence of, of babydom, which is good because we were kind of sort of in denial. <laughs> we are doing the NIPT, which is a non-invasive pregnancy test in a couple weeks. And then I think it'll be more real.